scientific hand here with a question on topic 1.1. We're looking at uh, measurements. We have two lengths, A and B, and they're measured to be 51 plus or minus 1 centimeter and 49 plus or minus 1 centimeter, respectively. So A is 51 and B is 49. The plus or minus means that while we think the length of A is about 51 centimeters, based on our estimate of the uncertainty, we think that it could be as high as 52 centimeters or as low as 50 centimeters. And, and similarly, B could be as high as 50 centimeters or as low as 48 centimeters. So plus or minus one centimeter. Uh, in which of the following quantities is the percent uncertainty the largest? Uh, so if you don't know the answer to this right off the bat, what we could do is we could calculate the percent uncertainty for each of these cases. Uh, for the case of multiplication and division, it's as simple as adding the percent uncertainty of each of these two terms. Now what we have is the absolute uncertainty, which is one centimeter. To get the percent uncertainty, we just need to divide the uh, absolute uncertainty by the value and multiply by 100%. Uh, and what you'll find is that this one's about 2%, and this one's about 2% for a total of about 4%. Um, and interestingly, it's the same for part B. Whether you're multiplying or dividing, uh, you add the percent uncertainty of the things that you're multiplying and dividing. That means that they actually both have the exact same percent uncertainty, which means that neither one can be the correct answer, uh, because neither one is the largest. They're, they're both equal. Um, let's keep looking. For addition, uh, to combine uncertainty for, for added quantities, you add the absolute uncertainty. So the absolute uncertainty for A plus B is simply 2 centimeters, 1 plus 1. Uh, but we want the percent uncertainty, so that's uh, 2 centimeters divided by the sum of A and B. 51 plus 49 is 100 centimeters. Multiply that by 100% to turn it into a percent, and you get 2%. Uh, which means that B must be the right answer, because it can't be C or D, and A is less than C and D, so it can't be the largest, so it has to be B. Uh, but it also has to be B, because whenever you're doing a subtraction, there's this tendency for uncertainties to explode in size. And I'll show you how that happens. The way that you calculate the uncertainty for a subtracted quantity is very, very similar to the way that you do it for added quantities. We want the uncertainty in A take B, which is still two centimeters. You don't subtract one from one and get zero. You add one to one and get two. But then to turn it into a percent, you take that two and divide it by the quantity A take B. 51 take 49 is two. Multiply that by 100% and you get 100% uncertainty, by far the largest. This is something that you want to keep in mind when you're designing experiments. Adding, fine. Multiplying, fine. Squaring, square rooting, dividing, fine. Subtracting has this tendency to cause the size of your uncertainty to explode. So. Ideally, you'd want to design your experiment such that no subtraction is necessary in your processing. If subtraction is necessary, you need to be careful about keeping your original uncertainties as small as possible and keeping the difference between the size of the quantities that you're trying to subtract as large as possible. Here we see relatively large uncertainties and very, very similar quantities, 51 and 49, which gave us 2 divided by 2. Um, so something to keep in mind for later on when you're thinking about things like your physics ideas.